Brain Line, everyone. Um, I'm Sam. This is lovely Michael. Hi. And we're joining you from Slate Education. Uh, we're here in London tonight at the lovely Standard and Slingsby Salon. Um, and Michael has this great haircut to show you. Um, I'll pass you on. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. As the lovely Sam said, we're here from London. I want to introduce you to my lovely model. This is Kate. Hi. Cool. So a little bit just to explain what we're going to do for you today. It's going to be this lovely short graduated shape, which is going to come heavier in the back and come tighter on the sides. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do this lovely soft layer that's going to come over from the top of the head and it's just going to cascade down. So it's this really nice tight short graduation around the sides and the back and then this long sweet and soft fringe over the front. Sorry to spin you around like that. If you, get, if you get sick, let me know. So where we're going to do this is we're going to start from this top section here. So if you want to come in at the end so everyone can see this. So what I've done is I've sectioned off an area from the top and I combed the hair away. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the hair out horizontally and I'm going to cut my first section from the top. And what this is doing is it's going to create the weight line through the top of the head. So I'm actually going to have the base of my shape coming through the top. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to see where I'm going to connect the hair to. So I'm taking these sections around horizontally, but I'm going to connect them vertically. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to control that shape better. So when you see it, you're going to see a really defined shape coming all the way through. And the good thing about this is it allows you to control that shape you're creating without having to think so much about how you pull the hair left and right. Okay? So what we're doing is we're working all the way through to the back of the head and just creating that first section through the top. So a lot of people, when they do this, is they try and come from the front with their first section like this. And it's very good when you're doing it like that. But the problem is, is to keep the balance a lot of the time. So what I've done is I've done this first section at the top. And what I'm going to do afterwards now is I'm going to do the other side. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please let us know where you're from. So we have got everyone up. I am sorry, I'm not looking at my phone. I'm actually reading all these messages from everyone that's tuning in now. So we've got hello. Hello from California. Hi from Wales. Belinda Jones from Wales. Hello. Um, it's so great. I think these things are so great to see. You've got everyone around the world watching and we're here in, in London and Michael's cutting away. And yeah. So obviously um, people watching will obviously be familiar with Hairbrained, be familiar with Slate. But for those that aren't familiar with Slate, Michael, do you want to maybe yeah. touch on a little bit about Slate? So Slate is an advanced hair education company. So we travel the world teaching hairdressers advanced techniques in hairdressing. And what we do is we offer courses in cutting and styling, and now with color. Ooh. So Sam, say hello everyone to Sam. Hi. So Sam is our new color director, who's gonna start introducing courses now for 2019 with color as well. So now we really offer all the advanced hairdressing you need. So a little bit back to this haircut of what I'm doing. So you can see that I'm going back and I'm doing the weight light on the second side as well. And what I'm gonna do is once I've done both sides, I'm gonna come back and do a really nice cross check of the balance within this. So I wanna make sure that it's the same on both sides. And this is something that's really important when you work. When you wanna do a balanced haircut, the only way to do a balanced haircut is to check as you work. So what I've done is I've done both sides and I've used the measurement of my hand as a little guideline. So what I mean is when I pulled the hair out, I used my fingers away from the head to see how far away I am. So as an example, if I was more far away, I'd be like that. If I'm closer to the head, I'm like this. And so I try and remember how far my hands are from the head in order to do the same on the second side. Now, I always try and go longer on the second side, not because I'm going for an asymmetric look, but just because I wanna have a chance to correct it. Because if I go too short on the second side, it means I have to do the first side again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of hair out and just do a tiny little check. And so as I pull the hair out, I'm just looking to make sure that we're balanced on both sides. So something to do when you wanna check balance is to check all of it from the front to the back. 
So what this means is don't just check one little piece from the front, don't just check one little piece from the back, make sure that you're going all the way around the head to make sure that the hair is the same on both sides all the way to the back. So what I am is I'm very, very slightly longer on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back, I'm just gonna take that ever so slight millimeter off to just make sure I'm the same on both sides. So balance is a really big thing, but the only way to make sure it's good is to check, check, check again. Okay, so we're really lucky guys. If you have any questions, please ask. We love questions, we love answering them. Any technical questions, anything you wanna know at all, we love answering questions. So if you have any questions, Sam will be really nice enough to answer them for you as well. Yes, I'm here to, to answer everything. I'm just, everyone's just saying hi at the moment. Hi guys, um, thanks so, so much So go on, we, we want questions. Um, we've got questions about color, about cutting, yeah. um, anything really. I guess for me, um, and my sort of hairdressing life has always been just coloring. Um, Michael, I'm assuming, is yeah. just cutting. Yeah, um, that's true. So I always find it interesting, obviously a lot of, a lot of hairdressers around the world do a little bit of both. Mm. Um, for me, I've always kind of focused on the coloring side. Yeah, so I think this is something that, you know, obviously we specialize a lot in what we do, but I have a, a lot of respect for people that do both cuts and colors, you know, I think it's, it, it's, it's two th different kind of skill sets that you need, uh, like if you're a very patient person, you can do color like Sam, if you have no patience whatsoever, you can be a cutter like me, because I like instant gratification for my work. Um, so if you have any questions regarding cuts or colors today, please feel free to ask. So Slate is really passionate about answering all your technical questions. So for those of you that are just tuning in, I want to say a big hello. Thank you so much. I'm Michael, and this is Sam, and we're here from Slate Hair Education. And what we've done today is we're going to do a really nice, soft graduation all the way through the bottom of this haircut, and then we're going to work a really nice, soft layer through the top. And what you can see here is I've created first my weight line through the top of the haircut. So if we look through all of the top of the haircut, if you come in a bit closer, MJ, maybe, you guys can see that we started by creating the shortness on the top, which is what I'm going to now use to connect. So the way I did this, for those of you that are just tuning in, is we took a section from the top, we brought it out horizontally, and we worked all the way around the head to create our weight line through the top. This is a really easy technique for you to do if you want to make sure you have good balance throughout your haircut as well. Okay? So I've got some questions for you, Michael. Ooh, I love questions. So Zoe. Hi Zoe. Zoe Dean. Hi Zoe. Do you ever watch back your haircuts? Yeah, I, I have a tendency when I've got time is I come back and I always watch the hair brain lives. Um, they're sometimes fun, sometimes cringeworthy. But uh, I think it's really important that if you look at the way that you talk and the way that you cut, you'll always learn something. So it's important to watch other people's work, but it's also important to, to look back on yourself and the way that you work and the way that you explain things and think, you know, I always am a strong believer that nothing is ever perfect, so you can always improve. So I think self-improvement is really important. And so I only want to be better than I can be. So I always try and look at what I've done and think how I can do it better next time. I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much for asking it. And uh, let us know, give us a thumbs up if that answered your question. I cool. think, just to touch on what you were saying, I think it's important to have some sort of self-criticism of your own work, yeah. rather than criticizing others and uh, watching, you know, it's so easy to do these days on Instagram and just in the salon generally, I think you can't stop criticizing your own work because when you think your work is perfect, then it never is, you know. So exactly. I think that's important. And I mean, that's why we're in education, aren't we? Because we always believe that there is room for improvement. Um, and I'm a strong believer that the person that you should look at the most and look up to and think, can you be better than that is yourself. You know, there's no point in trying to be like other hairdressers because you're not. You are who you are, you're a unique, beautiful person. And so you have to look at yourself and think, can I do better? And if you think that you can do better, then, then it's worth pushing for. And if you think, you know what, I'm actually happy I gave it my best, then you have to be happy with that as well. So I think it's really important to look inwards. And especially, as Sam said, with so much Instagram these days and Facebook, it's important to look at yourself rather than compare yourself to others. Would you agree, Sam? Yeah, no, definitely. 
Definitely. Um, Instagram's good for certain things like this, like Hair Brain Lives, where we guys can all get together and it's a, a community, I suppose, rather than a criticism. Yeah. Right. So, Sorry, go on. Yeah, no, just to... all these questions, all these people yeah, are watching. Yeah, 100 100 and 191 people watching now. Thank you, 109 people. We really <laughs> appreciate it so far. Let's keep them coming. Tag a friend. So what I'm doing now is I'm connecting what I've done with my weight line on the top to the bottom now. So what we can see is we can see where I had already cut the top just to give me that baseline to work with. And now I'm coming back vertically and I'm connecting those in. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to create that strong shape because I've already created the shape here. So we're just coming with vertical sections and we're using the top as a guideline of our shape and we're just working towards the face. So if you have any questions, please throw them at us. We're looking forward to hearing them. We've got a great question from Marion. For me, this is a great question oh. for both of us, but okay. I love it. It's, is there a reason you've chosen this cut on this model? Yeah, of course. Suitability is really important. Suitability is really important. And what we've done is we've got a really amazing model. So for all of you guys to say hello as well, this is Kate. Hi. So Kate is obviously stunning. So we're, we're very lucky that we can do a lot of different things. But she came in with this haircut where it was very, very heavy throughout the bottom. And it just expanded a lot around the side. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to slim the sides and really just bring a softness to the haircut and accentuate the top as it falls softly over the face. So I very much chose my sectioning in order to do this. So when you think about the haircut as well, your sectioning is very important as to where the weight is gonna sit. What I mean by this is how much the haircut is gonna expand out or slim in. So by taking my section up here, which is above the roundness of the head, it's encouraging the hair to sit just flatter and softer against the head as well. So the reason why I've taken this section up high here is because I wanted to slim the sides and soften it. And the reason I've brought my section lower is because I wanted to build more weight and more length at the bottom. So I want the back to stick out a bit nicer and I wanted to bring this soft but really tight haircut in on the side. And just so you guys know, we also have Medusa here watching us. So in case any of you uh, misbehave today, Medusa's gonna come see you. So we wanted to go nice and tight as well so we can expose Medusa. But for now, she's just gonna be hiding until later, guys. So yeah, so for Kate, the whole point was to create that really nice soft haircut that sweeps over the face in the front, so keeping that soft layer and slimming the sides and making it just a really nice, tight, soft haircut. So I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, let us know in the comments and I'll go over anything again. So anything I say, guys, that doesn't quite make sense to you, I'll really be happy to say it again for you. So we really, really are passionate that everyone feels comfortable with what we've said and it makes sense so give us a thumbs up if that makes sense linda said you've answered my question before Ooh. thanks linda amazing we've got someone from sri lanka oh wow, hello sri lanka Delinica. i hope i pronounced that well um sri lanka you must be that's very early start for you or you've not gone to bed yet yeah that's all right <laughs> we know what hairdressers are like you're probably still awake it's fine We've got, hi Michael, I remember our meeting in Cyprus. It was amazing from Alexander. Oh, hi Alexander, how are you doing? He's Thanks. high from Moscow. Oh, wow. So you definitely haven't been to bed yet. Oh. <laughs> it's very late there now. <laughs> Good to see you again, man. It was really nice to meet you at that show. And yeah, it's so nice to connect with people from all around the world. You know, it's so nice. Wherever we go, we get a really nice reception. And a lot of people watch these videos. So we're really grateful to everyone that always tunes in to watch. We really appreciate the support. You know, if you guys can like and share as well, it'll mean the world to us. So thanks so much. And nice to hear from the other end though. We've got a question. How long will it take to do one haircut? I find this is interesting because obviously yeah. salon and academy creative work can yeah. be sometimes two separate yeah. sort of fields. Um, no, definitely. I mean, I think the, the question is how much time do you have? <laughs> You know, if you have 45 minutes, then maybe it has to be in 45 minutes. If you have an hour, maybe it should be an hour. If you have an hour and a half, maybe it should be an hour and a half. The truth is that in the time frame we have, we try and do the best job we can do. But obviously, when you've got more experience or better education, and you feel more confident about your work, you can do a better result faster. 
And I noticed that a lot. When I started to get better at cutting, I could get the same result that it used to take me three hours in one hour. Because my speed improved as my understanding improved, you can see a lot when I cut is, I don't cut again and again and again. I'm working very, very strict with myself. So I do one piece, I move on. I do the next piece, I move on. I do the next piece, I move on. And having this set structure of working very, very systematically allows me to complete things quicker because I have a vision and I execute it as opposed to not being quite sure what it's gonna look like at the end and then going back and forth and back and forth. So I think having a strong vision and a strong idea of how you're gonna get there is a great way to do fast, good work. So I hope that answers your question as well. For me, it's funny, people ask me this question about mixing color, about how, Sam, why do you, how do you come up with these mixings and these, these ideas for mixing color? And for me, it's a sort of a similar answer where it's, I sort of do it more for feeling. You know, if I'm making a pink or making a blue, I've got these, this feeling. But as a teacher, that's obviously very hard to teach. Yeah. How then do you teach that? I've got a feeling and I have a vision of, you need to then pass that on to somebody else. How, how do you do that? Well, for me, I think at Slate, we're very, 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 very passionate to the fact that we believe everyone is a creative genius, especially if you're a hairdresser. You have to have a good creative sense, and what you don't have sometimes is the experience to be able to execute it. So I, I don't know if it's the same for color, but I find with cutting, someone may have an idea for a haircut, or they may have an idea for a type of blue they want, but they don't know how to get there. So what we try and do at Slate is we teach people how they can create their vision. So if you want to get this shape, this is what you do. If you want to get this color, this is what you do. Having that vision of it, we believe a lot of hairdressers have it, so it's just about explaining to them how they can achieve that vision that we think is so important. Yes, I think you've got sort of ba you've got basic rules, don't you? Exactly. And then it's about kind of putting your own sort of spin on it and yeah, so for us, obviously, you know, with hair cutting, it, it, it's very much about gravity. It's very much about if you cut it here, it's going to fall there, and that's the way it's going to work. So for us, about understanding those dynamics of where you want the things to sit would allow me. So I knew that I wanted the weight to sit there, so I pulled it out there, and I knew if when I pulled it out this much, it was going to fall there. Then I understood how tight I wanted to go, and therefore I connected it. So it's just about having that, first of all, that vision, and then understanding how you're going to execute it quickly as well. So, so now what we're doing is, as you can see, I'm just simply working around the head. So I'm doing the exact same thing. And you can see I'm taking small sections. So I'm only incorporating a new part each time as I work. And I have all the pieces that I've completed from before. And then I just take a very small section that I haven't. And now I'm going to work through and start to connect it. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to come over to the side, move the head over, and I pull the hair out, and I'm very conscious of where my fingers are pointing. So I want to go very tight here, so I make sure that my fingers are pointing very much towards, in this case, Medusa. I've never said that before, but that's fun. So making sure my fingers are pointing towards Medusa, because I want to go really tight, and then I'm executing it by cutting. So if I wanted to make it softer, my fingers would be pointing more away from the head. But because I want to go for a really nice, short, sharp shape that exposes Medusa, I'm really going in tight. Perfect, so you guys didn't think we were going to do Greek mythology today, did you? <laughs> it's brilliant. So again, just being very, very clean in terms of when I move the hair away so that I'm only taking a small section that I'm working with. For me, it's more important to take a small bit of hair that you haven't cut yet, but have a large piece of your guideline from before. I find this a lot with students is they end up taking a very small piece that they're gonna cut, which is great, because you don't wanna have too much hair in your fingers to cut, but then they don't take a lot of the guideline from before. And in that way, they lose their guideline a lot. So for me, it's very, very important to have a solid, clear guideline. If you cannot see your guideline, you're cutting in the dark. And so what we have to do is we have to see the hair cut from before, the hair that we've cut in the previous section, and then we follow that as a guideline. If you cannot see your guideline, 
you are cutting in the dark. So it's very important to have that very clear guideline so that you can follow it. I'm gonna do the last section on this side and then I'm gonna come from the other side and connect the second side in. But remember, I've already focused on my balance from when I cut the first part, okay? So what we can do is I'll just do, as I finish one side, I'm just gonna do a lovely little recap. So I'm Michael Pizzolides, Creative Director of Slave Hair Education. This is Sam, she's our color director here at Slave Hair Education. And this is Kate, our lovely model. So what we've done is we're gonna do this really nice, short, soft haircut that comes in very tight graduation around the bottom and the back and the sides and then connects with a very soft, sweepy fringe over the top. I don't know if you call it sweepy fringe in America. Let us know. Bangs. Uh, bangs. Sweeping bangs. Like bangs. Sweeping bangs. <laughs> Sorry. And what we did, the way we did this, was we took a section from the top, and we took a, ver a horizontal section, and we connected all the way around to create our shape. So this created our shape. So you can see throughout the top, we have this lovely shape coming all the way around. And what we then did, on the side that we finished is we came through with vertical sections and we connected it and so we had that weight line that piece that we did horizontally and we connected it in with vertical sections i've done the one side and now i'm going to do the second side for me what i like to do is i like to do my basic shape and then i like to cross check afterwards because what happens is if you cross check too much well what happens if you go too long or too short on the second side you end up having to cross check again. So what I try and do is I try and do a very basic shape and then I cross check afterwards. So we've got a lot of questions, Michael. Yes, throw them we've out. We've got a lot of people asking about whether or not this is sort of a uh, runway or a creative haircut or is this something that would be good to use in the salon? You can definitely use this in a salon, 100%. You know, I think that this can be adapted as well for softness. If you pull the hair further out, it's going to be a bit of a softer haircut as well. If you go in tighter, it's going to be more sharp. I definitely feel this is a, uh, sorry, let me move over so you can see better, that this is definitely a very salon friendly haircut in my opinion. It's something that a girl may ask for when she comes in, that she wants kind of short around the sides and the back, but she wants the long sweepy bangs or fringe, whatever you want to call it, around the front. So it adds that element of softness while taking away all that length that we don't want on the sides and the back. Um, so I think I've, I've definitely been asked for this haircut quite a few times in the salon. So I think you'll find this is a really good haircut to have in your repertoire for the salon as well. And obviously how you style it will make it a very fashion forward haircut or not. Um, but I think these haircuts are very much fashion forward these days. They're definitely not considered a, a heavy classic haircut. They are considered quite a contemporary shape as it were. So those of you um, that are watching that are possibly interested in coming and doing some education with Slate, how would you, Michael, then, um, the difference between the creative courses and the more classic courses, yeah. what's, what's the difference and what are you going to see between the two? So what we do is we have our first course, which is geometric. So this is a three-part series where we teach all of our geometric hair culture, which is really the core understanding of dynamics of how hair works, how you build shapes, and techniques in hair. So once you've done these three courses, which is all of our geometrics, so you really understand the dynamics of how to create technique and shapes. So it could be a round shape, a square shape, a triangle shape. It could be a line, it could be a layer, it could be a graduation. So once you really understand these concepts, then you can move on to doing things which is more abstract. So abstract cutting would be more mixing of different shapes when you work. And then you move on to creative haircuts. And creative haircuts is really just the foundation haircuts, the geometrics, broken up into little tiny pieces and then put back together again in a beautiful way. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know our work, you know, you can just check out Slate Hair Education and you can maybe see some of our creative work as well. It's quite crazy. It's quite creative. I, I will warn you, but uh, I hope you guys like it. I think for me as a colorist, um you know, often when you start doing color, the first thing you want to do is uh, start making blues and pinks. And for me, you, you kind of need the, the foundations first. Um, so for those of you that often go on creative courses, I think if you've been hairdressing for a really long time, try a classic course. 
Um, they're the, cor the courses I actually enjoy teaching the most, especially if you've been hairdressing for 100 years or, you know, long enough um, to understand that you need the foundation uh, techniques to be able to do the creative stuff. You need to, to break the rules and creative stuff, especially colouring. Um, you need to know the rules and the theory and the basic things that you would have learned from the beginning to be able to do that. Um, so I think it's important not to disregard the foundations yeah. and to, um, they're just as important, if not more important than creative things. Creative for me is a bit more bespoke and a bit more for feeling um, its taste, isn't it? Personal taste often. Um, whereas classic is, is what hairdressing is about, I guess. Well, I think classics is the, the, the core of how you do it, you know, and if you can't do it, then how are you going to do anything creative? So, you know, the way that I like to explain to my students is I say, you know, if you look at Picasso or Dali, they're two very, very famous painters, and you might say, well, I prefer Picasso, and you might say, well, look, I prefer Dali. The truth is they both knew how to paint. Mm -hmm. And so once you understand how to paint, then if you choose to paint like Dali, or you choose to paint like Picasso, or you choose to create your own new way, then that choice is yours. But you really have to learn the fundamentals of how to create first. So you know, when we teach, we always say, you know, hairdressers have an amazing vision to be creative, but they just have to learn the core of how to create first. And then what you create after that is your choice. You're the, art, you're the boss, you're the artist. And uh, I hope you guys agree at home. Let us know. Yeah, the questions seem to come on. You guys need to be answer, asking more questions. Come on, don't be shy. Yeah, I please. know we're, uh, we're talking about other things as well, but we want to know questions. We want to pick Michael's brain. Yeah, so I love answering questions about any haircut that you can think of, you know, whether you have a problem with uh, suitability, maybe you have a problem with creating shapes, maybe you have a problem with soft haircuts, maybe it's a haircut you did at home recently or at work and you just can't quite understand and you want a bit of help, we'd love to answer any questions. So please throw them at me like spears of fire and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Also, if you're a bit shy, you know, feel free to direct message us at Slate Hair Education and I'd be more than happy to message you back and answer any questions you have as well. Cool. So what you can see is I'm just connecting from the top to the bottom. So because we had this amazing shape that we created horizontally through the top, we're now connecting it from the bottom. So the top was already the same on both sides. All I have to do now is make sure that the angle coming down is the same. What I mean by that is because we took our section out horizontally, we know that it's the same on both sides. But now, when my fingers were pointing towards Medusa, we've got Medusa here, on this side, I need to make sure when I'm coming the other side that I'm pointing in the same way. So you can't have one side pointing in and the other side pointing out. So because the top is the same on both sides, I just have to make sure that the angle of my fingers pointing down are the same as well, and then I will have a great chance of getting a good balanced haircut. Got a question, Michael, from Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. As you work down from the top to the bottom, are you changing your finger position? So what I'm doing is I'm keeping a consistent angle in terms of I'm keeping the angle close towards the head. So what this is doing is I'm making sure that that angle coming down from the top to the bottom is pointing in the same way, so towards the hairline at the bottom. But as I'm working around the head, I'm moving the hair and I'm pulling it straight out. And what I'm doing is I'm following the guideline from the top because we took this horizontal section in the beginning. So just to recap, what we did was we took a section horizontally from the top and we worked all the way around from the top first. And you could see that as an example, in the front here, it's shorter and in the back, it goes longer. And what's happening is when I pull my fingers out, I don't need to think about the length difference because as long as I follow the guideline from the top, the amount my fingers are pulled out is connected to how much hair I have at the top. So by doing this section first horizontally allows me to not think about anything. All I do is I pull the hair out and when I connect the top, I know that I'm the right length and I work my way down. So this is longer than the front, but I don't have to think about it. All I have to do is pull my fingers out, and when I see the top connecting, I go down. So it stops me having to think about over-direction, how much I pull the hair left or right, 
all I'm doing is when I do the first section horizontally, as long as my fingers connect to the top, it means my shape is good and I don't have to think about my over direction. Does that answer your question? Please let us know. Jonathan, Thanks. yes. Thank you for your question. Thank you so much. Let Jonathan. us know if you need anything else. Um, we've got another question and he's asked a few times, so I feel like we need, we need to definitely yeah. answer it. Jonathan yeah. said, nice, thank you. Oh, thanks, Jonathan. So I have a client, this is quite funny. I have a client who likes a slightly tighter nape area, but she, but she has strong directional growth that goes into a DA. <laughs> that's no. us. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I had to say it. I had to say it. I was Sorry. waiting to know if he knew what that is. Yeah. I didn't know what that is, but he okay. did put duck's yeah. ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how would you correct that? Um, so when you're talking about strong growth patterns, rarely there's only two options. One is you leave it really heavy. Two, you cut it really short. And I wish I could tell you there was something else, but unfortunately we can only work with what God's given us, right? Obviously, in our case, it's all beautiful, Kate, so thank you very much. We also got Medusa here, so I have to be nice. But what I would say is, if you're working at the bottom, if it's really, really jumpy, what you might have to do is go very tight and very short with it so that it doesn't stick out. And, you know, you might even have to scissor over comb that little area just at the bottom to make sure it's nice and tight. If you think that it's too jumpy and you can't control it, the best thing to do then is to leave it heavier. So you can actually leave it heavier, but lift it up. What I mean by this is do graduation. So do something that you pull down, but leave it very heavy so that it looks like it comes high up, but it's a heavy graduation. If you're going to go tight, know that if you go too tight, you're going to have to scissor over comb it in order to get it really tight. So looking at the growth patterns before you start is a really, really important thing. So you're either going to work with the growth patterns or you're going to work against the growth patterns. If you're gonna work with them, leave it heavier or keep the hair in the direction that it moves. If you're gonna work against them, cut them really short. I hope that answers your question. Let us know. I'll be really happy to hear. So what I'm doing is I'm just cross-checking my work. So what this means is I did my section vertically. And so I'm gonna come back now and I'm gonna cross-check horizontally. So what this means is I'm just checking the shape from left to right. So I'm not looking at the hair from up and down. I'm just picking up the hair and I'm looking from left to right that it's a really nice clean shape that I'm working with. And so we're just checking that. So lifting the hair up and you can stand on the other side. So I'm, I'm standing on the opposite side, but obviously you guys don't really want to look at my back all night. So that's why I've decided to stand on this side as well. I mean, I have a nice back, but I don't think it's that nice. So try not do that. Our camera woman's laughing. Sorry about that. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm just lifting up the hair. And what you can do is you can just lift up the hair maybe a little bit higher than the elevation you used to cut it. The reason is it'll just make the whole haircut just a tiny bit softer. And that's always nice when you're cross-checking is you want to make everything blend and you want to make everything soft. So it's good that what you can see is what I'm doing is I'm actually lifting the hair up and I'm just checking in little, little sections. So I hope you guys can see that everything I'm doing is very, very clean and very, very methodical. What I mean by this is when I started from the front, I worked one, two, three, four, five, six, very clean. Now when I'm checking, I'm working very clean. One, two, three, four, and so on. And so that way, you don't get lost in your haircut. A lot of hairdressers have a tendency when they're cutting hair to get lost in their sections. They kind of don't know quite what they've done, what they haven't done. You know, they also maybe do a section, check it, and then after 10 minutes, go back and check it again. And so by working in this very, very clean, very, very methodical, very, very sectioned way, what you're allowing to do is you're stopping yourself from basically checking what you've already checked. And so, thou shall not check what thou has already checked, is the, is the name of the game, basically. So I'm going to ask you some questions, Michael, in terms yeah. of um, cross-checking. Because yeah. for me as a colorist, we don't really, you know, we might make sure that we've oversaturated the color and made sure that we have enough color on it, but there's not really cross-checking per se in color. Yeah, that's why I don't do color. <laughs> you want to cross-check. I want to cross-check my work. <laughs> um, 
So do you cross check the opposite? I'm going to ask you stupid questions. Yeah, yeah, no, this, stupid, is, but kind this of, is good, this is good. I don't know yeah. what I, you know. Yeah, no, so let's see. If I can make Sam, our color director, understand about hair cutting, it means that we're doing a good job, right? So basically, the concept is, Sam, have you ever heard about a layer, a graduation, a line? Yes, yeah? I know those, I know those. Yeah, you see? <laughs> She's lying, she knows how to cut hair. So what we've done here is we've done a really nice graduation. And so we've worked through on these vertical sections with this really nice graduation. And I can see that it's nice because I can see the angle of my fingers coming down as well. And so once we've done that, we think, okay, that's really nice. I know that my graduation is good. So why am I cross-checking? Well, what I'm doing when I'm cross-checking is I'm cross-checking what we call our shape. This is what we see from left to right. So we can see that the shape here comes around the head. So it's this nice rounded shape we're creating. And so by working these horizontal sections, what we're doing is we're cross-checking our shape. Now what would happen is, if we had done everything horizontally, we would have this nice shape, but maybe that graduation wouldn't be nice. Okay. So that's why we cross-check the opposite of what we're doing. So if we've done it vertical, we cross-check horizontal. If we've done it horizontal, we cross-check vertical. I know you have some other interests except um, hair. I mean, you did a little bit of stupid graphic design. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that kind of helps you with the geometry, the geometry mm. of, um, of hairdressing? Because yeah. that's something that's so different to color. Yeah. For me, it's that's art, and whereas. Yeah, I think definitely anything you learn in life, you'll always find a way of connecting it to what you do. So I don't know, any of you guys at home watching today, maybe you have a hobby, maybe there's something you've done and you can relate it to the craft of hairdressing, whether it's a social thing like talking to people or whether it's an artistic thing like painting. There's always a way of connecting what you do to hairdressing because hairdressing is such a diverse thing. So there's always going to be a little something that you can learn that's going to be able to come back into your job. And for me, graphics design is very much like hairdressing. You come up with a concept with your client, you design it, and then you execute it. Except it takes three months, and I'm not patient, remember? So hairdressing takes you an hour, so that's much better suited for me. What, so, what got you into hairdressing? Um, you know what? My mom. <laughs> My mom told me I would be a good hairdresser. And uh, I tried it and I loved it. I think hairdressers are very, very, very creative, fun people to be around. And I think once you're in it, you just get obsessed. You, you just have to do hairdressing all the time. And I think that is the beauty of it, is if you, if you don't like hairdressing, you're probably gonna quit within a month. <laughs> and if you love it, you're gonna do it for the rest of your life. So I think that is what makes you a good hairdresser, is having that passion and just practicing. And you guys at home are doing that now. You know, just by watching a hair brand live video, you guys are choosing your future and choosing to be better at what you do and excelling yourself. And that's really what it's about for me is, is you know, having that solid education and excelling yourself every day, every moment to get better at what you do. And for the love of it, really, because you want to be better at what you do and you want to offer more to your clients. Why did you get into hairdressing? Oh, well, this is a long story. Um, a little bit against rebellion against my mom. So I find it Ooh. funny that your mom um, got right. you into it. I got into hairdressing purely to go against my mom. Did um, your mom tell you, don't become a hairdresser? <laughs> I think she wanted me to do something a little bit, you know, rocket scientist or something, you know. So I could you was that, yeah, yeah rocket scientist. <laughs> the thing for me is I quite, um, I quite like science and I quite like the kind of more academic subjects. Um, but I always was really interested in art. Um, so I sort of found myself kind of half creative, half academic brain, which they, all, they always sort of clashed between one another, which I think getting in, into color was sort of an obvious, really, because for me, it's kind of very, um, cr very creative and also, you know, has to do a lot with art and then also has a lot to do with science. So I think that's one of the main reasons why I, I didn't cut hair, because I needed the I needed the chemistry, I needed the, the actual chemistry. Sure. Um, the mixing of things in my little, you know, witch's brew in the back of the in the dispensary. I like I've never I've never heard anyone compare colouring hair to being a witch before. <laughs> but I, I actually genuinely like that. That's a cool so for all you colourists out there in your little witch's brew. I love it. Keep going guys. So basically you have to be a little bit nerdy in that respect and I like that. There's a, there, is a, there is a lot of theory to colour. That's why I have a massive, massive respect for colourists because 
you know, there's so much involved in the understanding. Um, but I, I think, you know, once you have that solid education, it becomes much clearer. And that's what I loved is I found hairdressing very, very difficult. I was by far the worst student in class, you know, and I found that once I understood better how to create shapes and techniques within hairdressing, how to cut hair better, it made me enjoy it a lot more. It gave me a lot more freedom and it became less complicated. So I think that is something beautiful that we all go through on that same journey. Cool. We've got a question for you, Michael. Sorry, yeah. Dennis has asked this a few times. I'm sorry, Dennis, we've yeah. got it to it. Michael, if I can. Um, oh, sorry. You've, I need to go. I need to scroll up now for your question, Michael. Sorry. Have, have my question answered. Could you do this cut all over? Oh, could you do this cut all over scissor over comb? Sorry, Dennis. Um, you can, but you'll definitely have less control. Um, so, you know, for us working with our fingers first and then being able to scissor over comb afterwards gives us much more control than if we were just going to straight away go into scissor over comb. And it's very hard to build up weight to this extent, so to make it this heavy on the side with just a pure scissor over comb technique. So, yes, you can, but personally, I feel like I have a little bit less control than if I did it like this. So, you know, when you get better, you know, there's certainly things that you can do to save yourself time, but it's very important uh, for me to have more control of my shape, is to work this disciplined way, and then you can always clean up the haircut afterwards with scissor over comb. So, just to explain what I'm doing now is, what you'll find is when you work your first section horizontally, is you get a quite a heavy weight line through the top. So by just elevating that hair up like I did now at the very top, you're just making sure that there's no weight lines and it's much softer as well. So just for you to, for those of you that are just joining us, just a quick recap. This is Kate, I'm Michael, this is Sam. What we've done with Kate's hair is we took our first section horizontally from the top and what we did was we created just a weight line through the top. So we worked our fingers horizontally and then we connected everything vertically afterwards. And what I've done now is after doing that horizontal section, connecting things vertically, I cross check. And now, just so you guys can see how I scissor over comb, I'm going to do a touch of scissor over comb as well. Just so you guys can see the way I would work through a scissor over comb as well before we move on to the top. So, as we said before, thanks so much for tuning in. Please, please like and share this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to shout them at me and Sam will answer. We've got a question actually from Maria. Why is James missing tonight? Ooh, ooh, ooh yeah. Well, James, <laughs> hi James if you're watching, he's probably not, is on holiday. We gave him a holiday, who would have thought, right? See, so James got himself a lovely holiday. He's chilling somewhere in Turkey right now, just having a blast and relaxing. Uh, so we miss you, James. We love you. Um, but yeah, actually, it's quite nice to have Sam here, James. You know, so careful. <laughs> Beautiful. You've been replaced, You've James. You've been replaced, basically, James. So yeah, thanks. He's so trying much. to get the inspiration from something, though, doesn't he? Yeah. So exactly. He's probably sitting on the beach in uh, Turkey somewhere, and. Uh, Anyway. <laughs> if you call it alcohol inspiration, then he's getting loads of it, I'm sure. Where do you get your inspiration from, Michael? Personally, I love inspiration from animals. That's one thing that really, really inspires me, is, is animals. I think you can get inspiration from anywhere. Um, and I feel that, uh, for me personally, I just get it a lot from nature. So, um, I think inspiration can come from anywhere, and I, and I love hearing where everyone gets their inspiration from. So yeah, let us know where you get your inspiration from. Is it from fashion? Is it from nature? Is it from the hairdresser next to you? So just to explain to you what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm doing a bit of scissor over comb. So I'm keeping the head upright and I'm just coming in slowly and my scissors are moving fast and my comb is moving slowly as I work the way up the head and connect it. I'm trying to expose Medusa here. So for those of you that are just joining us, you're not going crazy. You're not seeing crazy things. There is really Medusa here ready for you coming out. So the most amazing model Kate here has got this amazing tattoo. So I'm loving just having fun exposing this as well. And so what we're doing, we're working in small panels. So I'm just working through the center first. 
and I'm just making sure that I'm building that weight up nicely as I work through the head. And once I've done the center, I'm moving over to the sides as well. And so we're going really slowly with our comb. And what you can see is I turn my comb out, but not too much, because what I'm doing is I'm actually using the length of my comb, so how much my comb sticks out in order to control the weight. So if I do this, I'm going to scoop the hair a lot, but actually by turning the comb outwards, I'm just creating a really nice softness to the whole thing and I'm making sure that I don't go too short. So if you have a tendency of going too short, try and do this trick. Try and turn the comb out more instead of out this way. So try and turn it that way instead of this way. And that way you're just keeping things much softer and you're building the weight more within your haircut. Does that make sense guys? Let me know please. Cool. Scissor overcome is something for me that I would I would like to learn. I would like to do bar barbering course, actually. Do you do barbering courses? We do, do we barbering do courses barbering like... courses as well. What we don't do is we don't teach clipper work. So we do everything a lot more softer. And I'd, I'd like to say more elegant, but that's probably the wrong thing to say. You know, but we work uh, a lot more with our, our scissors and our fingers as opposed to just clippering off the side. So there are a lot more elegant, softer haircuts, more gentlemanly haircuts, or even more, you know, surfer, punky haircuts. So, you know, mod haircuts, anything that's got a slightly softer feel to it, a so slightly longer feel to it, as opposed to just the kind of classic barber work with the clippers. So we do offer, if anyone wants to know about what kind of courses we do offer, they're more than welcome to go visit our website at slatehair.com. So for those of you that can't see it, we are Slate Hair Education. I've got a question for you, Michael, from yeah. Kelly. Hi, I, Kelly. I struggle to keep hold of the hair towards the nape when it becomes shorter. Any tips? Yeah, so again, it just depends on what you're doing. If you're talking about with your fingers, it's just very important that if you have a control issue, go slow. Always better to go slow, especially if it's an area that you're not sure about. I like to work with my fingers pointing towards the, the bottom of the neck as well, so I can keep my balance. So if my fingers are pointing towards the spine, it's very easy to see here with this tattoo, or pointing the other way. And I'm also very conscious about the type of hair. So if it's hair that is very jumpy, I'm more careful, I keep it a bit longer. And the same with scissor over comb. If I'm going in, I'm just going very, very slow, and I'm turning the scissors and the comb away from the head in order to not take away too much weight. So I think just going slow if you're having trouble and looking at the growth patterns and really allowing for the type of hair that the person has is very important. Dennis says brilliant technique. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. Beautiful. So just around the second side, keeping that beautiful softness in the front, but really exposing Medusa in the back here. I mean, you know, I'm, 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 I'm Cypriot, man. I'm loving this Greek mythology. I'm from the island of Aphrodite. Come on, man. This is Do you amazing. speak Greek, Michael? Um, you, know, you maybe go to Greece and teach a course in Greek. Well, funnily you say that. Now, uh, I don't actually speak great Greek. I do know when you're swearing at me, so, you know, careful, guys. If you swear at me, I will understand. Uh, but my Greek is not phenomenal. Um, and what we do is we do actually go to Greece and we do teach a lot. I think we're going to be in Greece maybe six, seven, eight times this year. Um, our next course is actually in Greece, um, which is on the 8th, no, 9th and 10th of June. We're going to be in Athens teaching our first of our geometric series, Swan, with Armour Beauty. And so Armour Beauty is this amazing distributor in Greece that uh, distribute Milkshake and Kevin Murphy, and they're hosting our class in June. So if you want to see Slate in Athens in June, just contact us or contact Armour Beauty, and we'd love to see you on our course. When you um, travel with Slate, Michael, yes. do you sort of adjust, if you're doing a collection or, or yeah. techniques, do you adjust? Um, anything depending on which country you're working in? Um, not really to be honest you know we have our set way of doing things and, and we find that it, you know we're really lucky in terms of a lot of people around the world seem to do it because I find as hairdressers we can all speak different languages 
but there's one language we all have in common, and that's hair. And so we can all all speak this beautiful language of hair. And I find that no matter, even if you can't speak a word of the language that the person that you're seeing, but you can talk and they'll understand, because we all speak that beautiful language of hair together. And I think that's one thing that I love. It doesn't matter where you are around the world. If there's a hairdresser, you're going to be able to have a chat with them about something and you're going to be able to communicate about hair. So I think that's a really beautiful thing that allows us to connect with people from all around the world. And I think that touches back, I guess, on suitability, because even though you might be teaching a set collection, yeah. the majority you're teaching suitability to. So if you're in Mexico, yeah. or if you're in Russia, yeah. or I'm just, you know. No, two places you've got two, yeah. two different hair types, two different skin colors, um, you know, different yeah. textures, everything. Yeah. Which generally, I'm yeah. stereotyping yeah. here, but you know, generally, um, you know, you need to suitability needs to adjust with with that. So definitely, I mean, what we find is obviously once you understand these core principles of when you build weight, when you remove weight, that you understand the texture of the hair and you understand the bone structure, because that's something you'll find is you know the bone structure of people in Russia and in Mexico will be different. You know, as a, as a cutter, you know, that's the way we work with, you know, I think colorists, they work with this idea of base colors. So maybe in Russia, as a very generalization, they're going to be more blonde, mm -hmm. and in Mexico, they're going to be more dark. But we work as cutters on bone structure. And so people have different general bone structure difference when you go to different parts of the world. So we know whether we can do things more soft or more heavy or build weight or not. So having a really strong understanding is really important. So guys, we're coming to an amazing part of the video now. We're coming to the point where we finish the underneath and we're going to move on to the top. So I'm going to do a quick recap. I'm Michael. This is Sam. This Hi. is Kate. Hi. We're and in London. We're in London, guys, just in case. And it is cold and it has been raining today. So just to let you know. So what we did is we started this haircut with Kate with the first section was a horizontal section and we worked all the way around the head horizontally. And what this did is it gave us a baseline to work with for the rest of the haircut. So it gave us this guideline throughout the whole head working horizontally. Then we came through and we connected with the section vertically as well. After that, we cross-checked. So we cross-checked horizontally. So after we connected it vertically, we cross-checked the whole thing horizontally. And then I did a lovely bit of scissor over comb to expose Medusa here. She's looking at you guys. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come through and we're gonna do the top section as well. So the top section is gonna come short and a little bit longer in the front. It's gonna give us this lovely little sweepy fringe. So any questions you have, please ask. Please like and share, we'll really, really appreciate it. You can ask questions today about cut or color because Sam here is our color director. I'm sure she'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. But as we said, guys, please like and share this. We'd really appreciate it. Let us know where you're from. If you're tuning in from another country or from London, please let us know. It would be great to hear from you all. We do. We've just had someone log in from Dubai, watching us from Dubai. Amazing. Sonia's from Spain. Uh, we've got some more questions about asking if Slate ever goes to the US from Patty. Yes, we do. I mean, we've just come back from the Hairbrain Video Awards. So we were in New York where we were nominated for the Hairbrain Video Awards. So thanks so much. Um, we did a, a lovely show with, um, with Aaron Johnson for uh, the uh, collective, and that was at IBS. So that was great. We've done shows in uh, Orange County, up in Los Angeles. And so we're really looking forward to being back. We're just in the talks with another salon close to New York. So we'll definitely be back, guys. So stay tuned. You know, please follow Slate and our journey on social media at Slate Hair Education. And uh, yeah, we can't wait to, to see you all. So we do. Cool. So just to explain to you guys what I'm doing is I've wet the top down now. And I'm going to take my first section as a vertical section through the top. So if I comb through... I'm going to then allow MJ to come and have a little gander as well at what I'm doing. So I'm just combing the hair in the direction that I want to take my section. So I want to take one section that's vertical from the top. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to define my length in the front and the back. What I mean is I'm going to connect the back to the graduation I've done and I'm going to keep the front nice and long and soft. So I'm taking my first section from the middle 
lifting all the hair up and I'm going to connect the back first and then work on the front. So I'm just coming from the back first. I'm going to move the hair out the way that I don't want it to use. And I'm going to come through and I'm going to find the bit that I'm connecting it to. So we can see that what I'm picking up, I can see my guideline from the back. So if everyone can see, that's the bit that I cut before. And I'm just going to just go straight up for now and just connect that graduation in from the back. And so what that's done is it's allowed me to control the length of the back and the graduation. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to come up and I'm going to start to layer the top as well. And so just working in small sections, there's no point in working with more than what I have or what, more than what I can have in my fingers. What I mean is there's no point in grabbing all of this big section because I can't hold it in my fingers. So just making sure that I'm taking enough that I can fit into my fingers, lifting the hair up, and now what we're doing is we're defining the length at the front. And so if I'm looking at the direction that my fingers are going, you can see that the length you're gonna end up with at the front. And so what we do is we always think about not what we're cutting, but where we're going. So we're not thinking about the hair that we're cutting, we're thinking about the hair that we're leaving behind. So it's not important, this hair that I've just cut, it's important about the hair that I'm leaving behind on the head. So what we're doing is when we're focusing, we're looking in our fingers at what hair is left that on the head, not about how much hair we're cutting off. And that's why I always find it so funny when people say, oh, it, it, is it cheaper, it's just a trim. It's like, well, I do the same amount of sectioning, I cut the same amount of snippets with my fingers, my brain has to think just as much, even though it hurts, and uh, so I think well, it doesn't matter if you're doing a trim or a complete restyle, you always have to focus on what you're doing. So just taking another little section across the head, another little sliver, and I'm just going to repeat the same process. So I'm just going to work through the back first and connect the back. And then we're going to connect through the top. Got a question, Michael. Do you, from Vicky, actually, Vicky, hi Vicky. Hi Vicky. Do you always use the small teeth of your comb? Um, I like to use the small teeth a lot because it gives me more control and more tension. Sometimes what the small teeth will give you as well is a bit of graduation, but sometimes that could be nice. And I always think it's better to have a very clean line with graduation and I can take out the graduation as an example if you're doing a one limb than having using the wide teeth of the comb and then having a very uneven line so a wonky line but with no graduation so what I mean is for me it's all about having control I prefer to use the thin teeth myself just because I have more control but that's nothing wrong with using the wide teeth of the comb it's just the way I personally like to work because I feel I have more control and I think a lot with hairdressing for me is if you want to create your vision, if you have an idea in hair and you want to create it, it's very important to have more control of your work. So this is just allowing me to have more control of my work. Be fussy about your tools, Michael. I know I'm super fussy. I can only use one Pintel comb. Um, this is not an ad. <laughs> Matador Pintel comb. The only one I can use. I've never heard of it. Matador. I've never heard of it. It is the only Pintel comb I can use. Um, wow. See, I, I learn something new every day as well. You mean it's not a wise park? Oh my no, god. No, I know, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm a wise park. You do amazing combs, but uh, for a pintail comb, I need, a, I need a matador. So, what is, what is amazing about this matador? I don't know whether or not it was what I learned on. So, yeah. it was the, I, um, the fabulous lady who trained me was also very particular of her tools, so I might have inherited it from her. Um, but also just, uh, yeah, it, uh, I was just asking you if you had the same kind of yeah, fussiness I mean, tools, me, scissor and combs yeah, and hair dryer. Of course. I, think, I think, as you said, it's a very personal thing. It's a very personal thing, but we definitely all have our preferences on how we like to work. You know, so for Slate, and for me personally, I like to work with smaller scissors because I feel like I have more control. And I like to work with smaller combs because we work with quite intricate haircuts. And so I feel like I have more control as well in that respect. So I think for me, you know, it's, I find that when you have the big scissors, first of all, you can't get in all the little places. And second of all, it's, a, it's, it's quite hard to keep things precise. So, you know, if you, had a, if you had a surgeon who was about to do brain surgery on you and he came with a knife this big, you'd be scared, right? 
So for me, it's also the same when you're gonna do a haircut, if you have this small set of scissors, it's very intricate, you can do more intricate work with it. And I feel like that's the, the main reason for me to, to keep these quite intricate small scissors. So guys, let us know what type of scissors you like to use as well. Is anyone fussy is anyone about anything? Fussy what about? are you guys fussy about? We like to hear how fussy everyone is. Um, Patty, Patty White, I'm guessing you, you are from the States because you're asking if uh, Michael will come cut your hair. So you have a model for the <laughs> Ooh, next time you're in amazing. the States. I like that. <laughs> where are you, Patty? Tell us where you are. <laughs> and Patty, tell us how open you are with your haircut first. <laughs> we, we, we need to know these things. Perfect. So what I've done is I've, now that we've done the underneath and we've connected the first section on the top, I'm going to do the other side on the top as well. And so I'll give you guys a little recap. So what we did was we sectioned off the top from the bottom. And what we did was we worked through the bottom first horizontally. And then we connected with everything vertically. We did the same on both sides and we slightly scissor over the column, the bottom, to expose our lovely little Medusa. We then took the back and we connected from the back all the way to the front to leave a soft, sweepy fringe in the front. This is Kate, by the way. Hi. I'm Michael. Hi. And this is Sam as well. I'm Sam, the fussy colorist. The fussy <laughs> colorist who will only work with a certain type of color. Um, so now that we all know, so now we're just continuing with our technique. So the really easy thing about this one is because I've got a guideline, because I worked through the first side, and now I'm doing my second side on the top. So I work through the right, and now I'm going through the left of the top of the haircut. So we're just moving everything away, keeping everything in its nice, clean order. It's very methodical. It's very clear for me what I've done and what I haven't done. And I think that's very important as well, is not getting lost in your haircut and making sure that you know what you have done and what you haven't done. So what I'm doing is I'm just connecting the back. We've got some, some amounts of sharp scissors. Lisa says sharp yes. scissors. Sharp yes. and small. Yes. Kate. I love sharp and small scissors. Please. Exactly. Three quarters too long, half length of scissors. Kim. Is that, is that the size? Like it's, it's a work in numbers, doesn't it, scissors? I think it's numbers? different in different countries. Yeah. We, I mean, we, you know, for me, I kind of know in inches. So I'm like a four and a half kind of guy, you know? I like a nice four and a half pair of inch scissors. These are actually a bit too big for me. These are five inch, so these are like massive for me at the moment. They're like giant scissors. <laughs> um, but I'm rocking it, guys. I'm rocking it. Do you have a brand of scissor that you prefer? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like quite a few brands. I mean, this one is right now is, is a Joel. I, mean, I actually quite like Jaguars as well these days. I think they're really good. Um, I think it's all about how comfortable they are in your fingers. I think that's a really important thing is, you know, you have to feel yourself what is comfortable in your fingers as well. And the type, you know, because there's so many varieties when it comes to scissors. There's offsets, there's straights. There's big ones, there's small ones, and you have to really figure out how your hand works and what's comfortable for you. So when you go into the shop and you look at your shears or scissors, as you guys say, it's important to, to put them in your hand and have a feel and feel how comfortable everything is for you when you work. Because you're going to have to use them for a long time. So for us, it's very, very important to feel comfortable with the scissors that we're working with. I've got a funny story about scissors. So when I started training, I guess in, in the UK, I know it's different everywhere, but in the UK, traditionally you do an apprenticeship in a salon and you learn the basics of both first and then you go to sort of specialize. So I did learn how to cut hair. I did learn how to sort of do layering and one length lines. And so I had to have a pair of scissors. So the scissor man came in and he brought out his sort of long list of scissors and I chose a pair only because I like the look of them. Yeah. I didn't even ask how much they were. I just was like, I want those. Anyway, so... So everyone want to know how much they were, yeah? Well, you don't want to know how much they were. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I had these scissors. I begged my mom. I said, Mom, Mom, I really need that. You know, I was, I was 17 at the time. Obviously couldn't afford the, these scissors that were, you know, astronomical. But they looked the part. Anyways, I sold them as soon as I passed our sort of finished cutting. I sold them to an assistant at the time. And I think he still uses them. He's well, got them in the salon those still. Those must have been good scissors if they yeah. lasted. I'm not saying you've yeah. been hairdressing for a long time or anything. Nothing I'm older than I look. Yeah, it's all that like, expensive face cream. Guys, she's still 12. Come on. <laughs> give, us, give us a comment if you think she's still 12, please. Um, Kim says her Korean scissors are smooth. 
I like that, you see? <laughs> so I think that that's it. it, it transpires a lot of things and it's all about the feelings that you have when it comes to these things as well. It, and, and you know, you have to feel comfortable with your tools. So I think giving it a little bit of time to get used to them as well, but they have to feel like they're the right weight and the right size for your fingers. You know, for us, we normally only work with this much of our fingers. As you can see, I have a massive gap there as well, so it's not really good for me. So if the scissors fit perfectly in that little space, then they're good size for you. That's how we normally measure if they're the right size for your fingers, if they fit within those areas. So basically don't buy them just because they look good. Yes, that's kind of what we're saying. It's the same as your Pintel comb, I'm D sure. Dennis says, do you ever use a razor? Um, I used to use a razor a lot, actually, Dennis. But what happened was I used to use a razor because I wanted to use it as in an eraser. <laughs> so I used to make mistakes in my haircuts and then try and hide them with thinning scissors or you know thinning shears, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> and then what I realized was, actually, if I just learned how to cut better, I wouldn't need to use them as an eraser or a rubber. I don't know what you guys call it in, in America. A razor. An eraser. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I used to try and use the eraser to erase the bad things in my haircut. And what happened was when I used scissors, I realized I could do a lot of the things that I was trying to do with thinning scissors and with razors. Um, with just a normal pair of scissors. So for me personally, I, I don't use them as much, but there's nothing wrong with them as long as you're using them for the right reason. So I would use a pair of uh, razors if I wanted a softer effect in my haircut. I wouldn't use thinning scissors as an example to get rid of lines that I've created in my haircut because I didn't do it the correct technique. So I think that's really important that you're using the right tools for the right reasons, not just because you're trying to hide your work. Does that make sense? I'm sure no, Dennis, not. Dennis, I'm sure um, that will have answered Good Dennis's answer. question. Um, what's your background, Michael? Do you want to maybe touch on a little bit of, of yeah. your sort of history a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I, I used to, uh, when, I, when I first moved to London, I was really lucky that I did a lot of fashion work, a lot of sessions. So I was, you know, assisting a lot doing fashion shows and photo shoots. Um, and that was a great experience for me um, but then i really wanted to learn how to cut hair properly and so i applied for a job to work at sassoon and after working at sassoon for a few years i decided to, uh, with my business partner who also used to be at sassoon in the 80s to uh, to start slate and uh, and that's kind of just how it snowballed from then cool so just coming back to the haircut what we're doing guys is we've finished the top now so I'll just give you that tiny little recap of what we've done. We started from the underneath and we created our shape horizontally and then we connected everything vertically from underneath. Then we connected the back and we took it up into a nice little layer and we worked through the whole top creating that across that comes higher in the front. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cross check. So the way we're going to do this is because we took our sections vertically is we're going to come across horizontally as well. So I'm just going to move the hair over Pick the hair up horizontally and just make sure from left to right that the hair is nice and balanced so there's no bits sticking out as well and that's really important. We've got a question from Patricia. Hi are Patricia. You, are you over directing or just using your fingers to create a graduation? So I'm I, at the beginning what I was doing was I was using the angle of my fingers to create the graduation so when I was doing it at first I was working vertically and so the angle of my fingers away from the head was creating the graduation. Now that I'm cross-checking, I'm not trying to change my graduation, I'm just trying to refine my shape, so my left to right at the moment. So I'm just making sure that the graduation sits nice across both the left to right, because I know that the graduation sits nice because I cut it vertically as well. And so if you are working horizontally, it is about how much you lift the hair up so the more you lift it up, the more you layer it, the more you pull it down, the more you graduate it. And so it depends on how you're working, because we, we define everything a lot between working horizontally and working vertically as well. So I hope that answers your question. So if you're working horizontally, like I am now, it's about how much you lift it up or down. If you're working vertically, it's about the angle that you create in your fingers. Does that make sense? Let us know. Give us a thumbs up. If not, just say, repeat.
I think you're getting a lot of questions about horizontally and vertically. So yeah. do you primarily cross-check horizontally and vertically? Do you diagonally cross-check? Ah, so what we always say is you always cross-check in the opposite way. So what we've got to think about is when you're creating, um, first thing I think it's very important to, to define the way that we think about things at Slate is we always think about things either as a technique. So a technique is a line, a layer of graduation, so a one length, a layer or a graduation and then we also have shapes so some of you may have heard these things about you know triangle shape or round shape or square shapes and so what is a shape and what is a line and a layer and a graduation so for us it's really important to understand the difference and then you understand better what you're cross-checking and when you're cutting so if we think about it let's say if we move this hair out the way for a second if we think about it for most of us, we can agree that this underneath here is what we call graduation because what we're doing is we're building up the weight across the head. And so in this way, if we understand that this up and down, that this is graduation, then what is this across? Well, this across is what we call our shape. And so what happens is when you cut vertically, you're cutting your graduation or your layers. And when you cut horizontally you're creating more of your shape okay so what we're doing is if you've cut vertically what you do is you cross check horizontally and if you cut horizontally you're going to cross check the other way you have a tendency as humans so if we cut like this we have a tendency to make hair softer and if we cut like this we have a tendency to make hair heavier so it's very important to just cross check the opposite way from what you cut so if you want to cut vertically because you want to create something softer that's fine just make sure you cross check horizontally so what i've done is in the back here let me move over so mj can see better in the back here i cut everything vertically so what i'm doing now is i'm coming across horizontally and i'm checking does that make sense everyone so i cut everything vertically and so i'm coming across and I'm cross-checking horizontally now because I cut the first bit vertically. And we can see it's blending beautifully in the back. Looks great, Michael. Thank you. But we've got some love from Maria, who's been to um, some slate courses. Yeah. She Hi, said, Maria. after watching this, everything makes a lot more sense. Amazing. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Oh, bless you. Maria, Maria where, are you, where are you based, Maria? Where are you from? Remember Maria? Maria is from, uh, she's in Ireland right now, if I'm not mistaken. You're in Ireland right now, Maria? Let's find out. So, yeah, thank you so much, Maria. And yeah, obviously, what we do is we go really in so much more detail when we're teaching classes because with the Hairbrain Lives, we have to kind of in an hour wrap everything up into a little box for you to, to make it easy. But if you come on our courses, a lot of what we're saying will make much more sense. And, and a lot of you that have come on the courses will be able to say as well that we go a lot deeper into what we're explaining because we can have more time and we explain with these amazing lectures and diagrams. But we've done many, many harebrained lives now. I, I think 14, I think, in total or something. So, you know, you can always go on our Facebook or our website and check out the rest of the harebrained lives that we've done. And you always understand more each time you watch them as well. So what I've done is I've cross-checked the middle and I've done that horizontally. And I'll cross-check one side horizontally, and I'm going to cross-check the second side horizontally as well. Beautiful. And so what I'm doing is I'm using consistent elevation with my work. And what this means is I'm checking and I'm making sure that my elevation is the same as when I cut the hair. So if we lift this section up, what you can see, and I'll show you from this side, is you can see that if you pick it up at the right elevation, you can see that your line is very, very clean when you come to check it. So what happens when you go too far down or too far back, forwards or back? So look at the line if I go too far forwards. No, keep your head there. So if I go forwards, can you see that that's not a clean line anymore to cut? And what if I go back? Well, if I go back, can you see that again, it's not a very clean line for me to cut. So the only way to make sure that you've got the same elevation is when you lift the hair up and you see that it's a clean line. 
If you go too far forwards or back, you see that the line gets lost. So if people ask, well, when I'm cross-checking, how high should I pick it up? Well, you should pick it up at the same amount that you did when you cut it. And how do you know it's the same amount? Well, when you pick it up, you're going to see a nice clean line. If you go under or over, it's going to stop being clean. And so that's a very, very good tip. Such a great tip. Yeah. So if you, you can maybe do some haircuts now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who wants to see Sam do a haircut? Give us a thumbs up. Maybe we should do a hair brain whereby you're teaching me how to do scissor over cut. I think that would be funny, right? I don't think Kate wants me to practice okay. yeah. <laughs> We'll find another one. That will be another hair brain <laughs> we'll live. Another one. Well, let's see. If everyone wants to see a nice colour hair brain live, give us a thumbs up. And let's see if we can get Yeah, we can do a live. To do a live colour. I think some of my... I, I mean, obviously, we're talking to today, but yeah. I, I quite enjoy it if you've ever done any sort of filming for DVDs and that sort of thing. It's good Where it's fun. quiet, I kind of music of your choice, and you don't have to talk... You're not talking, but you're just working, and you... Is it something quite a, special about that? It's a very different concept. Yeah. So guys, we're coming to another very important part. So I'm just going to go back to the very, very beginning. Don't worry, I'm not going to cut your hair again. I'm just going to explain, <laughs> I promise. And so I'm just going to give you a quick recap before I do the last bit. So we did the underneath first. What we did was we took a horizontal section all the way around first at the back and on the sides. So we did that. And once we had the length at the top here, that we had done we then came with these vertical sections and connected it we then connected the layer at the back and took it to the front all the way through and what i'm going to do now is the last little bit is i'm going to round this layer what i mean by this is i'm just going to take the hair from the center and this is going to allow the head to swish from side to side so it's going to allow the hair to just move better and so what we'll do is we'll take a section that runs from the top of the head down and we're going to take this corner off here which is going to basically just round it so it's going to blend in better with the top and the bottom so even though you can see here it's disconnected by just taking that corner off it's just going to allow the hair to sit a little bit softer and then we are done guys so if you have any questions you know now is the time to, to you know throw them at me Got a few final questions for you, Michael. We've got yeah. a question from Tammy. Uh, Hi, do, you, Tammy. do you cut hair? Do you cut wet and then dry and go back in? Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll always, if I can, cut the hair wet and then dry it. Uh, what I find is if the hair's already dry, you know, what happens if they sleep on their hair and then they come in? So if this is maybe. You know, what I'm trying to say is if they've already slept on their hair, it might look like the growth patterns work differently. You might think that the hair kinks this way, but it doesn't actually move that way. It's just because they slept on it funny. Or maybe you come in and you see my beautiful, beautiful curly hair that I have, and you think, wow, okay, this is going to be amazing. And at the end, I tell you, oh, by the way, I tongue my hair. It's not real. You know, you never quite know what the hair's really telling you until it's wet. When the hair's wet, it talks to you. So we're like, we're like hair whisperers, you see. The hair talks to us, and when it's wet, it always tells you the truth. And so what we've done is, we've just connected those sides, so it's just become a little bit softer as well through the sides. Beautiful, so everything blends now. We just have that lovely little softness. We've got Andy that says, I was a hairstylist for 10 years, and I'm looking to get back into it. Brilliant. Amazing, what do, you do know, what do you do now, Andy? What made you um, step away from hairdressing? Huh. We'll, we'll wait a, for that answer. It's a good question. <laughs> I think it's good. I think I think sometimes um, having more than one career in a lifetime is yeah. is the way forward. We I don't think people do it enough, especially in London. It's an you know expensive city. It's maybe uh, not so doable. Yeah, I mean I think also like we were talking about before about the things that you've done before. You know whatever you do in life can always come back and relate to hairdressing again. So I know a lot of hairdressers that are in their you know, 40s and more, and they're learning new skills. They're learning to do art restoration or computer science or graphics design or something that's you know, a little bit different that's just going to allow them to bring it back into hairdressing. So just to quickly explain what I'm doing here was I'm graduating the front by lifting the hair out, but I'm also keeping it soft because I'm point cutting. You know, a lot of you who watch my hair brain lives don't see me point cutting a lot, so you know, it's savor the moment while you can. 
And, uh, and what I'm doing is by doing this, you're just graduating the outlines and you're softening it as well and you're making it blend in better. So you're just removing the weight from that disconnection because when you do disconnection, it has a real chance of being very heavy. So it kind of sticks out a little bit. So what this is doing is it's just allowing everything to blend through from the front and the back with your disconnection. Looking good, very nice. So Andy says, this was his answer, I really want to do a refresher course and want to really master sectioning as I got disappointed with how it was in the end. Any, anyone would you recommend in London? Yeah, of course. I mean, so we run courses throughout the year here in London. And so if you want to go on our website, slatehair.com, so that's slatehair.com, or if you want to just send us an email at info, at slatehair.com and we'd be more than happy to let you know when our next courses are in London and we'd love to have you here. Oh, he's a, Andy says he's a personal trainer now, by the way. Ooh, nice. Not the, not the answer I was expecting. I like that. <laughs> Looking good. So we're just going to give it a little rough dry as well. And then we'll see if we can Lynn just joined us from North Carolina. We've got a lot of American uh, followers. to stand back and see what you're creating and so when you have a mirror it's like you're standing further away from what you've created and so it allows you to see better the overall shape so it's very important that we find that when you stand back you just see more clearly what you've done okay so that's why we, we find it's very good to work with a mirror as well so you can really see what you're creating. So I'm, I'm just doing a very, very gentle one side over the top just to make sure it's more flat on the crown. As we said, we always work with head shape as well. So we try and make sure that the top is nice and soft and everything blends beautifully as well. Looking great. Thank you. So the last little bit of scissor over comb as well. So if we just move it over to this side. Just gonna do that last little bit of exposing Medusa here for you. Cool. So when do you know to stop, Michael? You know, you can refine and refine and refine. Yeah, I basically know when to stop when MJ behind the camera goes, your time's up, man. Stop now. Yeah, she's not in. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little stop. Why don't you just quickly explain uh, the three color courses we do while I grab a product sound, if you don't mind. Yeah, so we're going to be doing three sort of working on the moment, Michael and I. Uh, Michael and I are working on three color courses, three um, techniques, I guess, or ideas of techniques that all sort of blend in together. At Slate, we sort of believe that you kind of need to start off in the foundations. Um, so we do a foundation, just to simplify the course, we do a, a foundation course, a more of a salon, salon um, modern salon, I would say, so slightly more creative um, course. And then we also are going to do more of a creative course. Um, those, you know, those courses can be sort of refined to what you need. Um, but I think it's important to sort of start from the basics and then work your way up. Um, we're going to start on doing some courses that um, refer to blondes. So I know of, often we're always asking questions about blondes and bleaching. And um, I think people are scared of bleaching sometimes in the salon. So don't be scared of it. Um, I think uh, doing some bleaching and some blonde courses at Slate would be a, a great way to um, sort of refresh um, everyone wants to be blonde, don't they? Clients always want to be blonde. So. I mean, I really want to be blonde. <laughs> Do you think I can be blonde, guys? Please. I'd love to be blonde. So check them out. I think they're all on, not, they yeah, on they're the website, on the website now, now. Yeah, so you, know, you can go on the website and check out the, the three different courses we do as well. Um, I've just put in a little bit of gel because I got really inspired by Medusa. You know, I just feel like she's a 
rock and roll, you know, cool girl. We've just exposed the undercut a little bit more and played a bit more with the styling. So we can see that soft little fringe as well coming through as well. And uh, yeah, I, I personally love it. So, you know, you could obviously leave it a little bit soft or you can push it a little bit more like we have as well. That's looking amazing. Cool, so why don't you stand up for us, Kate? Let's do a little recap, and then we're good. That's great, Michael. Thank you so much, I'll pay you later. <laughs> Beautiful, so, one last time for a lovely little recap. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. It's really been amazing. Why don't you come stand on this side for a minute? Sorry, well, okay. <laughs> so what we've done is we section off the top from the bottom. We first work through the top with what we call a weight line. So a weight line is the heaviest part of the haircut. And so we work through horizontally and we brought our fingers horizontally through both sides. So by doing this, we work through both sides horizontally first. And then we came through and we connected with our fingers around the bottom as well so by doing the first bit horizontally we just came and connected with our fingers vertically then we scissor over comb the bottom and then what we did was we connected the back and then we brought it up into a long disconnected fringe that comes down softly as well and then what we did was we cross checked horizontally and we took the corners off the side we pointed into the front and connected around the back this is also Medusa, so she's checking you out right now. And this is the lovely Kate, and we have to thank Kate so much for being with us today, so thank you. We have the lovely Sam over here as well, our color director for Slate, who's joined us today to replace James. James, you have a job. And I'm Michael. So thank you very much from Slate Hair Education. Good night from London, and we look forward to seeing you next time. So thank you everyone from the hair brand community. And uh, by the way, don't forget to check out the head sheets on this on Slate Hair Education's Facebook page. We'll be live in about 20 minutes. See you guys.